Hi, my name is Matt Schultz, and this is my presentation on building a newsletter. The parameters were that I use Adobe Suite and that it is 15 to 20 minutes long. To expedite the process, uh, given this short time length for the lecture, I already went ahead and I've built one and I've laid it out in layers. And you can see that they're not visible here. But what I'm going to do is, is add to it so that we can get through this pretty quickly. So now InDesign is the standard layout program that designers would use. You can lay things out in Illustrator, and I've seen people even do stuff in Photoshop, but for all intents and purposes, we use InDesign, and that's predominantly what I'm gonna use here. Now, when starting a project, one of the most important things to consider is your grid structure. Now, you can choose to not use a grid. You can go off and lay it out any way you wish, but for something like a newsletter, this is pretty standard. We want it to look kind of like a newspaper, right? So I'm gonna follow a pretty tried and true grid system uh, using columns. So to start with, uh, command colon is, is our guides, and you can see I've added guides here, and I've div divided the page up into thirds. So I'm also going to apply the rule of thirds here with this project. So this is a, uh, a tried and true uh, system for photography, for design, for layout, and again, in, a, in my you know design courses, we would go more in depth on this. So I have my guides here that have divided it up into a third horizontal, and I'm going to go up to layout, margins, and columns. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to add in my margins. So again, uh, kind of if you use a larger margin, let's say I go to one inch. In a way, this would be kind of a uh, it becomes more classy. This would be more of a magazine layout. You know, I'm having a lot more space here. But since this is a pretty compact newsletter with a lot of info, I'm going to take this back to a half inch right there. And then I'm going to create some columns. And for this one, I want to do three columns. And then the gutters, as you can see, are equal to the margin. That's a bit much. So I'm going to go ahead and make these like half the size. And I like to keep these things proportional um, because, you know, again, you could just kind of leave this wherever, you know, at these 1.87. But why do that, uh, you know, if you don't need to? If you can start out with things being generalized, it's easier to remember and it gives you a good starting place to work with. So, so there you go. Now I have my rule of thirds, both vertically and horizontally giving me a really nice layout. Now this would be something else that again learning the program wouldn't necessarily teach you but I like to start out with two components. One is is a photograph. This is a photo I took because I did all the photography for this client as well. It's their golf course and the other thing is, is their logo. Right? So if I put this logo, let's go ahead and just scoot this up here. What you see if I hit W, which is presentation mode, gets rid of all the guides, is to a large degree we're already kind of at a magazine like a back cover you know, so the reason I'm doing this is though, it's giving me kind of some ideas between the logo, the style of the logo. Let's go ahead. We have these bands here. These are called mountains in Illinois, right? So it's a prairie golf course. They have these slow arcs. You can see it's kind of mimicked here. I've got this really nice elliptical component. I want to create some graphics that not only reference the logo, but also reference the image, right? So we're trying to keep it thematically consistent to our client's needs, right? Or the needs of this newsletter. So the way I would do this is I'm gonna go ahead and lock the back layer there, grab my pen tool, P, and I'm gonna lay an anchor point here and then go to the next one, click, hold, and drag. And this gives me the little directional arms. And I've got an arc that matches the, the putting green there. If I hold option, I can click in the middle and that'll get rid of that directional arm so I don't have this fallback arc that you usually get. If I hold shift, that'll create a straight line on uh, 90, 45 you know, degree angles. So I'm filling it there. I'm going to put one here and I'm going to put one there, closing that path. So now I have this really nice little graphical component that kind of mimics, right, the arc of the logo and the arc of the golf course. I have some preset colors. My client already has a palette, which I've loaded up here. And I'm going to, uh, I made a gradient, and I'm going to go ahead and apply the gradient to that, to this, this object. So let's go ahead and put that gradient in there. Um, if I go up here to my gradient tool and open it up, I'm going to go 90 degrees so that the dark point is on the bottom and not on the left side. So again, when I auto loaded it, it was at zero. We can see that and I want to make it uh, gradient horizontal, not vertical. 
there we go. Go back to my layers, and now I have this really nice object. Now you can copy it, edit, copy, or edit paste in place, which is command option shift V. I've placed it in place, right? Right over the top of the other one. And I'm gonna go ahead and make that blue. Now what I can do is just grab this one and put it below that one, right up in the layers. You see I put the blue below the green and I scoot it up and this gives me a really wonderful little graphical component that matches the logo. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off because I've already got this built and I wanna just kind of keep going forward. So there it is at the bottom. I can select these two by click, hold and drag and use my selection tool, copy them, paste them in place, and then use my rotation and flip the whole thing and then move this up top. And now what I have is an even more uh, balanced and symmetrical design for my newsletter. Now, besides the logo, what you think would be one of kind of the most important aspects in the hierarchy of design for this project is actually the body text. Now, if I click on the body text, this is the amount of text that was given to me by the client for this project. Now, this is a really uh, fair amount of text and ideally we don't want more than say 50 to 60 characters width. If I select this row and I go window info, what this will show me is that this is 80 characters long and it's 12 words. Ideally what we want optimally is 50 to 60 or less. So this gets back to kind of like why newspapers are uh, so short. What happens is, is if this is too long, uh, it's hard as a reader to follow this. So what we're, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna select the text box, right click, go to text frame options, and we're gonna make this another column, right? So now I have two columns. I'll go ahead and hit okay and scoot this up. And you can see they have two columns here. And if I go back, the gutter width is equal to what my margins were. So if I click W out of presentation mode, you'll see that this block actually fits that uh, gutter width and it within the margins. Let's go ahead and scroll this up. So I get fairly two even blocks there. I've got one line in the next one, so I'm comfortable with that. And there I have my text. Now, if this text was twice as long, right, it would start going into this picture. So I'm gonna go to layers. Let's go ahead and add a, a white box in, in here. I'm gonna make that white by selecting paper, move this above the image. And here we have uh, kind of a, a newsletter layout, right, I'm getting closer. So this needs the headline. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the headline in and let's go ahead and scoot this down a little bit, start getting this positioned. One of the other aspects that the client needed, if you look at the, the sheet, they wanted a photo of the boy golfing. Here's the photo of the boy that I've already cleaned up. And real quick, if we wanna to go to Photoshop, I can show you uh, this photo. The client requested that the second ball is gone, right? So using the clone stamp tool, I'm zooming in command plus. So I'm zooming in on this shortcut S for clone stamp. I can use bracket right or left to create my target point delivery. And then option gives me my target point. So from this point, that's my target. I'm going to click, hold and drag over to my object. And now I'm gonna basically place what's at the target in that diameter over the ball. Right, so I click it and there I filled it in. And while I'm here, let's go ahead and clean up this course a little bit. Command zero is show all. And I have the whole image of the kid now, the golfer. And I like to use, you know, ideally, I'm gonna double click this background. I'm gonna make it a smart object so this is not permanent. You can also du duplicate it. We would go over that in our Photoshop class. And I like to use camera raw because it gives me a lot of uh, filters uh, like these mid-tone shadows and stuff like this. So what I would do with a photo like this is I would drop the highlights because his shirt's blown out and I want to correct that. I would check my whites, probably pull them back. The color temperature is a little off for me. I want to, I kind of want to make it a, a little crazy vivid, you know, because that's what this is all about, this beautiful golf course. And uh, I'm doing that by changing the color temperatures. Um, and then, you know, I would always just check my exposure. Uh, do I want a little more contrast? Maybe so. So there, that's looking a lot closer to what I want. And I would say, okay. And then what I would do, and this is old school, and again, in 
this being a, a, a semester long course, we would go into this in detail. It's old school to kind of save this as a TIFF, but I like to go ahead and do that and I save it as a TIFF. And that gives me a backup so my master's never uh, messed up. I can't tell you how important this is because I've been at jobs where you know, multiple people are working on one project and somebody saves something over the master on accident. So I would go ahead and hit save. This is gonna replace my original. We're going back. And this would be the photo I brought in. Now I already laid this out. Again, you can use file place, you know, command D and put the photo in. And then this gives me, you know, it's already framed. And if I double click it, you can see that that's the actual photograph I was dealing with in Photoshop, but I have it reframed because this has the, the window framing quality over this. So again, I can move this and, and position him around using the arrows or whatever I want, right? Now, we still have some other components that the client wants to bring in. So they have uh, the name of the event, right? So I'm gonna click, hold, and drag that layer up top. So that's text. Again, we would already know how to apply text here, uh, but you know, you can hit the text button, type in your word. We can click, hold, and select this and change the colors. We should already know all of that. And then there's some you know, other components. They have their taglines, um, the Facebook logo. So again, I, I'm gonna hit the Facebook logo, put this on top, there it is. Let's go back out of presentation mode and look at my margins. I'm still falling in line with the margin. You can see this in my three columns in my margin. Let's go ahead and uh, put in this group of text, right? So this is their taglines. Right. And then they had a poll quote they asked for, so I've created that here. And there it is, I, I've placed it there. I'm dealing with the symmetry of color, the balance. We have the bottom text, which is the address, phone number, the name proper. And then they like to have this big golf ball that I introduced to their, their project. So there's the golf ball and I've oversized it and I use drop shadow, which is up here. We can go to the drop shadow and adjust the drop shadow dimensions here. And I've already done that and then place the, the logo on top. Again, I'm gonna go to present, out of presentation mode. I think the logo needs to go down a little bit so that it's in line with the phone number. This is all on this baseline here, back in presentation mode. I'm getting really close to this, this kind of being completed. There we go. Um, presentation mode, I'm gonna go ahead and drop that against the margin line. So again, I'm very linear here. I've got nice space between the top and the bottom. And there we have it. We have kind of this newsletter, but we have all this kind of dead space here. So what I would like to do is just go ahead and take this and then pull up that white background that I made, select, we're gonna unlock the last layer, select that, and then scoot that down until this putting flag, you know, the golf flag on the putting green is, is centered. And so to me, it's kind of like there's, there's some design components that I'm really liking here. One, he's putting and, and this kind of implies that it's going here. Also, I like that the red or the blue graphic correlates to the waves here on top of their logo. So again, you know, what I have is this a, a pretty um, tight little newsletter that they can send out to their clients. Now, I would personally say, why even bother with this white part? You know, I mean, it kind of gives it that newsletter look, but can we just go further and get rid of it and let this exist, you know, actually on that blue sky that I created in the photograph? And then because I've lost that white, I'm going to go ahead and select this headline and change it to a white one. And then I have some other components here where I could add in this green band that I've designed for up here. It's a different variation of the gradient and I have one down here. And this is just expanding on the design, making it even more graphically appealing. Now, if we go out of presentation mode, let's just cover some points here. I go out of presentation mode. The, um, the flag on the green, uh, the tip of it equals this point in the lower third. And then I have the kids 
you know, face and stuff in the upper third here. So again, in dealing with these and the idea of power to the right that we read from the left to the right, and in photography, we tend to look at things from the left to the right. So if I create more weight on the right side, you're kind of drawn through this text to that image. Whereas a lot of times if this image was on this side and the text was on that side, you kind of tend to stop there and maybe not want to read the text, right? So there you have it, back in presentation mode, hit W, and that's our completed uh, newsletter, a very classy and, and a nice version. So thanks for your time, and I appreciate you watching.